Um, I think that we're blessed in the United States. Um, we have been very successful innovators up until now. I mean, we, we, the founders of the country put a patent system into the Constitution and put the notion of invention and rewarding invention into the Constitution. And I think entrepreneurship is in our DNA. I think that we have um, capital markets that are very supportive of people going out and trying new ideas. We're not afraid to fail. You can have a company that's not a success and go on and be successful later. Many other cultures are not as open to innovation and entrepreneurship as the United States does. We also have the blessing of all the investments that our, our government with a lot of foresight has made over the last 50 years and we're on a really good pathway. That said, I think that we're at a critical fork in the road where if we don't continue to invest and if we don't continue to nurture and grow the assets that we have, we will lose them. Uh, I think that too many people in the United States are too complacent and think that the rest of the world cannot catch us and that we perhaps have a birthright to all the things that we have and I believe the reality is all those things can change and we're doing some things now where we're not making as wise investments as maybe we did in the past. Um, we're not giving as much emphasis to um, nurturing entrepreneurship and nurturing um, not only the development of new technology but I really think the commercialization aspects. One thing in the United States that we've never really worked on is trying to ensure that the fruits of our investment, both public and private, are attracted here in the United States. If um, the federal government invests in a new um, technique for curing cancer, for example, and the results of that are published in journals all over the world, there's no guarantee that that will be um, inure to the benefit of the United States and I think we need to give a whole lot of thought to recognizing not that other countries shouldn't be successful. I don't think it's a zero-sum game. I think we're thinking about making the pie of the global economy larger and figuring out strategies where we retain our capabilities and our share. And I think if we don't give serious attention to that over the next 10 years then um, we'll be surprised at how our living standards decline probably by the time my children, I have a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old, and I want, I want the economy to grow and the opportunities to improve by the time they're out of college and ready to have jobs. There are many, actually. Um, I think that um, nanotech, we barely are at the beginning of understanding what nanotechnology is and how it changes fundamental assumptions about different areas of technology that we're familiar with. Um, for example, simple example, um, a company that I'm working with has used a nanotech application to completely change everything we know about the chemistry of a, a lead acid battery, which has been in existence for 150 years. And I think you can see those kinds of fundamental changes as nanotech is applied to different areas of life, whether that's medicine, whether that's manufacturing. Um, manufacturing new products atom by atom, you know, and thoughts of what that might mean and the dramatic changes. And I think those both come with a positive and a negative because we don't really know what putting a nanoscopic particle inside the human body may do or may not do. So I think that, that we always have to um, try to cr create as much freedom for technological innovation to flourish, but also be mindful of uh, the impacts that it may have on human health um, in particular and the environment. So that's one. And then, then the other major area I would say is energy, and I, I think we just have to change. I mean, there are, there are a number of pathways that seem to be pr being pursued across a variety of areas that have the potential to change the fundamental equation of how electricity is dr delivered, how um, transportation is achieved, and um, I'm really hoping that that's, that's an area that we start to get some big results from pretty soon. Um, most of 
what people are working on seem to be more kind of incremental and long term and we're looking at mid-century for what people are predicting. However, I think that's one of the things about technology. Um, it's, it is unpredictable. There, there will be breakthroughs in some of these areas that will change how um, we're thinking about things today and that will begin to take us on the pathway toward energy independence and uh, the competitiveness that comes with the jobs that come with us.